What's good, man? We got Tommy G, Slab City, the city with no laws, man. That's what we're getting into right now, man. If you're new to the channel, only thing I want you to do is subscribe and like the video, man. That's it. Let's get straight into this, though. I've been missing out on Tommy G content. I think I only missed like two videos. Hey, TV, we just gonna drop this shit. We gonna fuck the song. What? They wanna fuck with me because I got my money up. These niggas act like the gang, but I swear they ain't. We leave the bustle of Los Angeles and take a four hour drive through desert and desolate land to arrive at a spot known as Slab City. It's freedom. It's like a little city in itself. The city with no laws. This plot of land was once a military training facility known as Camp Dunlap. However, when that closed down in the 1950s, it became a city comprised of artists, nomads, squatters, outcasts, and retirees. It's a place where anything goes. In one moment, you may find yourself walking past clear signs of arson, and the next, you may find yourself sitting down with a peaceful old man talking about the meaning of life. People come here to escape the rules of society and to live a life of freedom. Today, we explore. Uh, this is like a no man's land type place. You just come here and whatever. Find a place to live and live for Slab City. Hey, this is fire. Whoever did this is fire. Really artistic. For real, for real. Slab City, California. Okay, we're here at the Slab City gift shop. Explore. What do you think brings somebody to Slap City typically? Everybody's got their own personal reasons. What brought you here? It seems like an artistic... I just knew somebody that was staying out here. How often do people with video cameras show up here? Like every day. Really? Yeah, that's oh, why wow. you charge 100 bucks for an interview. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What do you mean by that? All right, well... <laughs> that was funny. Thank you for showing us yeah, around. Yeah, and... no worries. How'd you get the nickname Daddy? Could you take care of people? Yes, pretty much. I always have a, a bed and we've got food for people. And it is the best and worst place I've ever been. What's the best mm -hmm. aspect? I have more friends here than anywhere else. Guess what I did five and a half years ago? Oh. I got on my bike and I rode here from New York City. No way. Yeah, yeah. What? Bro, in car. That's a long trip. On a bike? What's the worst thing about Slap City? There's an evil rumor mill that will say things about you that are not true. Yeah, I've been accused of murder here. R Where are you guys from? You look pretty <laughs> Milwaukee. Wow, Milwaukee. Wisconsin. I, I, I actually love Milwaukee. Oh, I love, wow. I, love I mean, out there, you got to think about it. Only thing you got out there is he say, she say. So rumors and stuff, so... I guess it comes with territory. And, uh, the Spin Ping Pong Club there used to work with Susan Sarandon. What's your life philosophy? Everybody dies, not everybody lives. Do you feel like you're living? Facts. Yeah, I think in a hundred years, all those tombstones gonna say, he died, she died, they died. And am I gonna say this motherfucker right here lives? <laughs> <laughs> My last paid job was a, a college professor. Really? That's what oh. you do for work now? I was too busy work. I had too much work to do to get a job. No, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm Fair always enough. working. Is there an alternate currency here, or how do people? Do you need I money to survive to here? Myself, actually, I tried to invent a currency here, but uh, generally we barter or cut out the middleman. So I always say, money is not wealth. Money is a measure of wealth. There was a girl here. She had a straight razor. Uh, I said, uh, I give you five bucks for that straight razor. She's like, eh, f you. I don't want your money. I said, I'll give you some. She said, yeah, sure, I'll take it. I <laughs> gave her the for the straight razor. She sticks her hand up on the road here and goes, you want some? to a lady riding by on a bike and she's like i got cancer thank you so much i mean we, we live on a little <laughs> bit of money but less than 50 dollars a month before i was a professor i was an engineer i'm actually pretty well known ai research. wow bro you never know people background and where they came from that's crazy man researcher got lots of talks online and all kind of stuff uh, from my my old life Definitely gonna be hard to gauge how much That's of that crazy. was true. Oh no, he definitely yeah. made all that shit up. <laughs> I opened up the spin <laughs> ping pong. <laughs> Talked to Susan Sinat, opened up a paintball place in Milwaukee. So he was an engineer, a bike deliverer. He saved <laughs> lives. Professor. A known AI. He saved lives, a known AI. <laughs> AI researcher. This and he's a YouTuber. <laughs> so far, you can already tell this is a place with characters. <laughs> All right, so we see a sign, stop, sp donate, speak. Let's see if someone wants to talk. We saw the sign, we wanted to speak with somebody. Tell us where we are right now. Man, right here in Slap City. On Bill Road. The Where'd first... you come from, Prince, before you came here? I was in Columbus, Ohio. How'd you find yourself from Columbus, Ohio to here? Like, I was having fun with family. 
Hey, low key though, you never know people' background though. I ain't gonna say he. I ain't gonna say he made a hundred percent of all that up. Uh, uh, some of that, had, some of that could have been cap. But you never know, bro. You never know. Any issues at the time, so I was like, yeah. I just wanted to do something different. I think I was just scrolling on YouTube, and I was like, you know what? I really want to check this place out because I was like, kept watching the video. So honestly, I packed like two pair of shorts, two pair of shirts, and the socks, and I just drove across the country. What did your like, family think when you made this move? It was definitely like some. That's crazy word feedback from it you know you feel freedom here but then you miss like society like what's going on back in society you miss like restaurants things like that things like running water you don't get that here so how y'all like how they shower like do they wait on like if to rain or something like how y'all like how y'all clean y'all stuff so i imagine psychedelics are an integral part of community here as you can tell by some of the Psilocybin art. I'm interested to see what we will find in terms of spirituality, what? psychedelics, and that things that people put them. in their body. Let's explore. So if we're looking at this map, folks, we see the range, the skate park, Oasis, the hostel. Does anything in particular stand out? I think the skate park. I'd say the cross made out of bullet holes. Oh, that's probably a skate park, that artistic stuff, because they do like a little slope you can go down and stuff. Yeah, I feel like that's the most dangerous part of the area. No? Remember, racist and murderers back there, promise. Can you tell us more about that? I don't know. They're all a bunch of good people. just can't live in society. How long have you been in Slab City? <laughs> Off and on since like 2016, so seven years. And what then? brought you here? I got pulled off the freight train in Yuma. I used to ride trains. Wait, what? So seven years. And what then? brought you here? I got pulled off. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They do. They they be catching people that that they're living in the train. They make them get out. That's true. That's true. I used to ride trains. Oh yeah. I don't anymore. I kind of live here for the most part. My boyfriend at the time had been here before, and we came over. I get meningitis. Okay, that's a pretty serious yeah, thing. Yeah, for you. I know. Just mm. after being homeless for years, I'd rather be home free out here than homeless on the streets. Where have you lived homeless before? All over the country. Oh yeah. Like from New York to LA. This is home to me. This is the best place to live. What do you love about Slab City, and what's not so good about Slab City? There's the lack of judgment. Everybody comes here from different walks of life. Facts. Can you tell me about your story? That's what I'm saying. You, 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 like, you, you never know where somebody came from, though. They could have came from family, just got too stressful, like, forget it, I'm going here, and just fell in love. You ended up homeless, and how you ended up here? Grew up in a Southern Baptist strict home in Texas. Lost my mom when I was young, raised mm. by a single dad. I had grandparents, you know. They tried. You know, it was rough. That was in the 80s and 90s. Got pregnant at 19, got married. Had a few kids that didn't work out so well. I was in an abusive marriage. My kids mm. are all three in college now. You know, I did the right decision by, you know, letting them stay with their dad. And I was present. Yo, hopefully, hopefully her kids see this, and then they come and get her. I mean, she might not want to leave, though. You feel me? This might just be home to her. You feel me? But hopefully her kids see this and come see their mom, though. For another eight years after that, I had a mental breakdown to set my ex-boyfriend's car on fire. Mm. Do you guys ever come here? They do patrol. They have to patrol. Really? And they don't want to stop. They want to patrol through and leave. If they get called out here, they have to come. And that kind of pisses them off. Are you still in mm. contact with your children? Mm -hmm. Do they oh. say, Mom, we're worried about you, or Mom, we're happy no, for no, you? Or... No, they just want me to be happy. Yeah. Does oh, everyone get along okay. pretty well around here? Oh, no. Some people act like they're still in high school. I mean, you just stay away from each other. I mean, you have everything here. You have. That's what I'm saying. This is like a no man's land. Like, you stay out my way, I stay out my way. I mean, you stay out my way, I stay out your way. You give me respect, I give you respect. Like, you get what you give out there. In any other small town or big city. How many people do you guess are here? Fifteen hundred. Really? Mm-hmm. And the summer it was dwindled down to about 200, 300. Because it's so awfully hot. Right. Mm. As you can see, this recycling isn't a strong priority around here. Howdy, partner. On the lookout for something? Yes. What's your name? Papa Cat. Papa Cat. Papa Cat. And what are you looking for a jar for? Nuts and bolts. Nuts and bolts. You guys need a tour guide? I think at the moment we're just kind of wandering around and bumping into folks. Part of the requirement, if you go on my tours, you have to microdose. My yeah. You know, because this is a strange oh, wow. place, so it helps you kind of ease into it. I do it too. We can go and I've got some mushrooms in my knapsack and we can all microdose if you want to do that. What to you is a microdose? Are we talking about Not much. Brand? Do you need a tour guide? At the moment, I think we're going to just pursue this on foot, but... Where are you guys from? We're from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't do no mushrooms with no stranger, no strange person, bro. Don't do mushrooms at all, because you can get in a bad trip, but yeah, just leave that stuff alone. <laughs> You're from Milwaukee too? <laughs> yeah. 33rd North Avenue. No way. 
What was it like growing up in Milwaukee? I was in the ghetto. Yeah. At age six, I had a twin two and a straight razor. Yeah. Oh, wow. And you was white and you come out of the or you get shot. <laughs> How long did you live there for? <laughs> Yo, what's wrong with you? And when did you leave Milwaukee? 37, I joined the military. Oh. How to operate tanks, how to build, how to reveal engines, how to weld, and how to shoot. <laughs> yeah. How the heck did you start out in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and find yourself here? How old are you now? 63. It's free and you broke. <laughs> yeah? yeah? What do you love about Slab City? <laughs> I knew it used to be uh, Camp Dumbop, a military base. What's the worst part about Slab City? Get this. Cowboys who have to burn through burn to a house. Yeah, we've seen an alarming oh, wow. number of burnt down structures and cars here. Are you still in contact with anyone back in? Dang, so that's like they get back. You do something to them, they burn your stuff down. Now you got to get a new crib. That's crazy. Milwaukee, any friends and family? Or was it random, though? Family? Yeah. We have a video conference. I guess, would you say you had a normal childhood? Yeah, I was a nerd. So is this trash <laughs> treasure to you? Uh, cat? treasure. Some things I can pick up and make things out of. Exactly, exactly. You got to build stuff. You got to see How would you stuff. describe yourself in three words? Nerd, introvert, self-reliant. How would you describe Slab City as a whole in three words? Ghetto, dumping, crazy. What's the yeah. crazy side of Slab City? I hear people shouting in the background. What do you think they're shouting well, about? Uh, they're talking to a puka. A puka? That's an imaginary friend. That flash of grass. Oh, this is glass. Is this any use to you? There's usually coffee creamer in this thing. What advice do you have <laughs> to the youth and to the people watching this? Get education. And don't let nothing bother you. And don't follow those sports figures. Why is that? You can't train a monkey to box a basketball. But you can't train a monkey to build a bridge. What for? Uh, 99.5. <laughs> I mean, nuts. And where do you rank on that scale for here? Are you a 1 out of 10, not very nuts? A 10 out of 10, very nuts? I'm a nerd. There ain't any nerds out here. I heard some coughing in the background. I don't know if someone's doing drugs right now. <laughs> Are you a religious man? I don't know, I'm beating that shit. <laughs> Guys, you ever meet a guy? Oh man, that's so funny. I really, I really do believe he probably just the person that's just down on their luck, man. Or just, you feel me? Life. I like Papa Cat. Ask him some questions. Cause he sound like he got a. He, he sound like he know what he talking about. He just, you feel me? You'll learn something. Like talking to people in this kind of population is it's very hard to sort the truth from mm. delusion. Oh. What the? Well, we've heard our first explosion here at Slab. <laughs> what was that? Is someone blowing up a car? <laughs> I'm Tommy and I'm here with. I'm at Mine's Cash. Is that a solar panel you got there? That's his solar panel, not mine. What are you trying to do with that? Uh, he runs his laptop and stuff on it. How do you guys figure out how to do all that? I don't know. What brought you here? See? You see what I'm saying? It, like, you don't know where people come. They, they, they smart, bro. They making the best out their situation, bro. Friends, I'm serious, they talk about it. Where'd you come from? I come from the East Coast. If you were to describe Dang. yourself in three words, what would you say? Nice, polite, but uh, I like to uh, seclude a lot. Would you say you're an introvert at heart? Probably. Bro, this night shift would be treacherous, boy. I don't know. I don't know about this night shift. With a red roof, I think I see it down yonder. Well, hello there. Howdy. We were questing around and we were told to come to the place with the red roof. Are you okay if we ask you a couple of questions? Hands, are you guys feds? You don't look like feds. <laughs> no, <laughs> we don't have any wires on our chest. We were just. That's what a guy who has wires on his chest would say. <laughs> <laughs> and now you saw my nipples, which I don't know if we can continue the conversation. Sorry, man. Okay, I'll try and focus. <laughs> what the heck can you tell us about this place that we're at? It's filled with interesting people. I've met a bunch of them so far. You haven't met them all. Are there a lot of nomadic folks here that come and go? Well, depend on their parole situation, yeah. <laughs> Are there a lot of former uh, inmates here? That's what I've heard, yeah. yeah. Uh, you get really nice, wonderful people, and you get some who uh, you'd rather not meet. How yeah. do you describe yourself in three? There's the, like, like a spot and, like, you were running to in, like, The Walking Dead. Like a community, you don't know it's a community, and people just start popping out of places. Three words. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, hungry, thirsty, mobile. Are you happy? <laughs> sort of, kind of, yeah. This is a happier place than most. Can yeah. you tell me more about that? You don't need an expensive lifestyle to be here. What is mm. your life philosophy? Right now... Like, really here, you just gotta make, like, this is one of them places, like, you are, like, it is what you make it. Type, type. Because you can build it, like, if you know how to build, like, you know how to do carpentry, you can build you a nice spot out here. For real.
and be good. Or, you know. Now it's food, shelter, you know, the basics is all you really need. This might be going down deep territory, but what would you deep. say the average person here, their home life, was it good? Was it really tough? Oh boy, you got a mixed bag. I'd say there is evidence that some people have been through a lot. Trauma. That's something that you cannot have, bro. Once you start talking to people and digging into their mind, the trauma is just, you just dig up some skeletons in there. More and more in life, enjoying the really simple things like feasting your eyes on this. I've never met God, I don't know him, but this certainly makes me wonder about him. The question is, is any liquor drank here? I don't know. Well. <laughs> when you were a wayward traveler, the inn, the pub, was a place that you gather at night, have community, have a drink, maybe fill your... You see what I'm saying? They making the best of their situation. They didn't build them up a little, little, a little bar. Stomach with some, some nice local food. So let's explore this place and see what it has. I noticed a lot of crosses and Christian imagery here as we drove in. What percentage of people would you say here are Christian? Well, it doesn't really matter because like, um, I believe that all of their uh, beliefs intersect with Christianity. I think Christianity is about feminism and agreeing. Really? That's a mm. take that I've never heard before. But I'm just a gay cat girl for Jesus, you know? <laughs> well, someone's gotta be, right? <laughs> what, what makes you say that Christianity is about feminism? If you have two opposing interests that don't necessarily go the same direction, like let's say this is how man moves and this is how God moves, right? Victory by the cross is just finding the intersection of those two things. So I think that it's an obligation mm. of Christians to find ways that all of the other faiths would go to their heaven too, you know? In uh, Eastern faiths, like it's possible to have multiple paradises. Mm -hmm. They got a band back though. You know, like uh, if you have a certain person who reaches enlightenment and they're like, can create a paradise that's perfect for them, they can take people to that one. You know, like, uh, but I have a friend who knows the Buddha, and I have a friend who knows Jesus, and I have a friend who knows the devil. Are you happy? Yeah. Yeah? You're not alone if you feel that happiness is the truth. Were you ever really <laughs> not happy in the opposite? Yeah, end? I grew up feeling like I grew up in hell. Where'd you oh, grow wow. up? Albuquerque. And what made you think it was hell? Oh, suffering. You know, like um, my parents were alcoholics, so they were absent, and I've been mm. transgender since I was one, but I couldn't start until long. How would you know that? Like, how, like, how would you know that you've been like that since you was one? When do your memory even kick in? Ain't it like three or something like that? Two, three, three and a half, something like that. When do your memory kick in? Long after I've already left my family. And is there an epiphany moment that you remember? Like I started finding out that I was transgender by doing mushrooms. How old were you when you did mushrooms? I was in college. I was like, I don't know. I thought he was going to say something crazy like five. But you knew when you were three, four, five as well. Right. Like I knew, but the problem was that people um, told me that it was wrong. Like at one year old, my own family called me a pervert. And there are no perverted one year olds. How did you even do, manage to move in a way that made you perverted when you were one? What I knew was that like my body was the same as other girls, but then like they would be like, what's that, you know? But I've had dreams since I was a child that I was a girl. You know, my gender is complicated. I've experienced parts of masculine and feminine identity. I always tell people that I've been love and war, you know? But so what was it like growing up in a house out with alcoholic parents? They just weren't really there. Are you in touch with them at Man, all that's today? Crazy. My mom's dead and uh. my dad uh, still drinks alcohol like my mom's still here. What led you to mm. of all places Damn. Slab City? Oh, I, literally my father appeared, not my dad. My father told me to come here. He said, come here with your friend Marco Polo. Let's start a war. Who's Marco Polo and why you want to start a war? Uh, well, so my friend Marco, I call him Marco Polo because jokingly I think that he's a reincarnation. You seem like you got a lot of going on in that brain. Yeah, here. he, he's, he is amazing there, bro. But this is this is this is what I'm talking about. Tra you can't trauma is there, bro. You start talking to people and just if it's there, it's there. I mean, these are the first kids I've seen in Slap City. We have kids everywhere. Like um, they have community here. Um, I want to be able to have them get education and stuff. But a lot of people here are just against mainstream society. I have really surreal mm. experiences, like dying and coming back to life repeatedly. Uh, is that in your in the dream world? No, like in, in my real world? late waking life. Like if something would kill me, I just stay alive have you ever been killed what before like literally like yeah i mean like i've gone to hell the devil told me to eat some black cherry mike's hard lemonade and i felt myself come back to life of all things there's a lot going on in this video 
it is a lot going on i'm so confused right now i won't could have recommended i feel like you could have made a better choice we're going to continue our tour of the area and i appreciate you talking with us have a great day talk Thank to the kids things. yeah so this is california ponderosa i want to i want i want to hit a kid side of what what's going on in there it's a family-run place. The lady that owns it, she has teenage kids. The school bus picks them up right yeah. here. Flap City in three oh, words. Okay. It's a unique place, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Two is good enough sometimes. Yeah. And what led you to this place? You could be anywhere in the world right yeah. now, and we're here together in yes. Slap City. I'm having a midlife crisis. Well, mm. better than a quarter life or a third life, right? <laughs> what led to this midlife crisis? Um, so COVID happened, right? Yeah, right? Changed the whole damn world. Right. Yes. And then right about a year into it, my last child grew up and moved out of the house. I got rid of my house and all my things and I bought a motorhome and now I stay here in the winter. So. And how did that change your oh, life? Wow. I feel a whole lot better. Yeah? Yeah. Was See it what terrifying happens. to make this leap? Yes. Ah, she said she stayed there in the winter. So I guess when they get hot outside, like they say, it, a lot of people leave because it's California. So makes sense. I don't want to be in the desert in the heat. Can I first say that it smells gall darn delicious gall back darn here? Delicious. So what is it like being a kid in Slab City? I've only been here for about a month and I like it so far. That's smart. What's it like being a chef in Slab City? That's different. What's your favorite thing from the kitchen? My favorite thing, probably the schnitz schnitzel or the chili. You live a vastly different life than the average kid your age. Oh, yeah. What are the benefits? What are the pros and cons of how you're living right now? You don't really have to worry about, like, the city and all the noises coming around. You don't hear cars a lot. How would you rate the community here? I mean, I like it. I think the overall community pretty cool yeah a lot of people come here because they don't have a place to come like it's i'm telling you he he probably running free he probably finding stuff oh let me go bust some bottles or something like he probably just chill he doing what kids do bro kids bust bottles bust windows out he probably just doing regular kid stuff if he skate he probably at the park they live mm -hmm. where they got booted from their family disowned so yeah they so they start something there like would you say you're happy most of the time yes and are you happier here than you were in other parts of your life or less happy how would you say it? about let's see this would be the second place i like the first place is being back in germany with family too back in germany mm. are you german by i'm what? first generation german american really yeah. oh wow the worst part is the summer summer sucks because the heat Sweet. Man, the heat know. is California. It's California. Yay. The heat is. <sighs> it's pretty much crazy during the summer. As a kid navigating this world, I don't know if you can tell, but a fair amount of the inhabitants have a strong habit of, of different drugs. What do you think about taking drugs, whether you're going to stay clean or whether you're going to. I don't think I'd ever do drugs. My mom was a huge drug addict. Mm. What was the drug she liked? All of them. All, all the bad of them. ones. All the white ones and like pass outs. Is there any other thoughts oh, you guys have or want to add to the camera? Oh, I'm just... Hey, I, I really do hope he stay away from that stuff for real, for real. Like, you know, but hey, life get hard. You you meet people that, that can influence you and all that crazy stuff. I really hope he stays away from, from drugs and stuff, especially at a spot like that. Because it, it seems like, like the guy said, it, it kind of takes you away. It, it helps the city look a little better. So hopefully he, he stick to his word, man. I'm pretty sure he will, though. Yeah, she's an Airbnb guest here. You can book an Airbnb here? Yeah, yeah there's three of them. If you don't mind me asking, what does an Airbnb in Slap City go for? Well, depending on the place, really. Here, I think it's $33. I think we should eat. I think we should enjoy the community. And we'll see you guys in just a couple minutes. If I gotta go to the bathroom, should I just find the best bush available? Or is there a... Damien, will you show them where the bathroom is, actually? So Anywhere you are, you need available. to know a potential exit strategy if you have to poop urgently. And I'm gonna figure that out here. <laughs> oh, wow. Like I'll see you guys in a second. What would be your Yelp review of this? I liked it, honestly. But I feel like better than a porta potty, some nice wood instead of like a harsh plastic contrast. So if we get food poisoning from these mushroom burgers, this is a safe bet? <laughs> Oh wow, that was a a a, a, sh a shroom burger. Oh wow, nah. No. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Like, what do you do for fun around here, man? Uh, go to skate park. And See. How many other kids are your age around here? Four or five. You're a chill dude, you know that. Thanks. It's pitch black out there. Do you think he could have a French fry? You think that'll disrupt us? You know, what? I'm even gonna give him the most juicy mushroom on my plate. Shot. Oh, sit? okay. Good boy. 
Oh, okay, 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 okay. It's not an actual drug mushroom. This is a mushroom mushroom, like a regular mushroom. Okay. Thank you. Ooh. I was what scared. did we learn I was here? Like, don't don't do it. Slab City folks. It's quite a welcoming community. It seems like a lot of people really just value the sense of community that they have here, the ability to be kind of be alone and just away from kind of the hustle and bustle of the modern world. It seems like definitely a lot of introverts are here. But what's interesting about an introvert is if you get them talking, it's hard to get them not to talk anymore. For real. Have a good night. Good. They got so many stories to tell, bro. Especially like and life ending up there. Gotta be a crazy journey, bro. If there's one thing I learned from Slab City, it's this. I met people from New York, San Diego, Milwaukee, Columbus, Ohio. And what that teaches me, we are never stuck, okay? You get to choose what your next step in life is going to be. You get to choose your path. Action is the ink that writes the story of your life. And uh, we get to choose what we believe in. Some people believe in that over there. Some people take some substances and see lots of visions. You only have one life. Be sure to live it. Be kind. Be nice. Be thoughtful. And listen to each other. We have a lot to learn. I'll see you next week. That's a W, bro.